Hey there out there, YouTubers. My name is Kevin Strong, and let me formally welcome you to The Kevin Strong Show. This is the first video, but there are going to be thousands of videos after this. So without further ado, let's get into this first video. And the topic of it is how to protect your debit card or the dark side of a debit card. So most of us are very familiar with the debit card. We know that we use it in our everyday life. It becomes the go-to method of uh, making a payment. Very few people make a transaction using cash. About 90% of us have a debit card. There's about 270 million people in the United States that use a debit card. But with fraud on the rise and so many different ways that hackers can actually get into uh, your online systems and compromise your bank account, I thought it would be an excellent idea to talk about what a debit card is, how you can use it, what happens when your card is compromised, and more importantly, how to set up some preventive measures to reduce the possibility of your debit card getting um, compromised. So first of all, the federal law that protects um, debit cards is called the Electronic Funds Transfer Act. And this act was, uh, passed in the legislation in 1978. We're going to take a look at it here real quickly. If I can get my screen to act right, uh, I've been working on this for a while. So let's see if I can pull this up for you guys. Um, okay, there we go. All right, so this is the um, Electronic Funds Transfer Act. And I'm going to basically talk about some of the services uh, that this act uh, protects as it applies to your uh, debit card. Obviously, ATMs, which basically have access 24 hours a day, uh, direct deposit, which allows you to uh, pre-deposit your money, including your payroll checks, government benefits, Social Security, uh, people who are on fixed income, uh, they typically have a direct deposit set up for things like that. Pay by phone. You may authorize your financial institution to make payments or transfer funds by way of telephone. Banks are required to confirm your identity by asking specific questions. So this is an interesting topic. Let's take a moment to talk about that particular method, because a lot of times you'll be doing a transaction with a particular merchant and they may not have an automated system set up. And the customer service agent on the other end of the phone will ask you for your debit card number and typically the three digit code on the back of that. So a lot of times when you go to the bank and they say, well, how was your card compromised? And you say, well, I just gave my card over the phone. You're still protected under this uh, EFTA. So please remember that. Obviously the next one is internet, which goes without saying, but let me take a pause and talk about that briefly because make sure you're comfortable and you know the merchant that you're using your debit card for online before you make that transaction. Big companies like Amazon, I haven't heard anything about they having their systems compromised or anything like that, but be very careful where you use your debit card online because when we get into this next section, your card or your bank account is actually more liable than what you actually think in the event that your card gets compromise. And a lot of people didn't know that. Once again, that was the motivation for doing this video. So electronic check conversions, this feature enables a business to convert a paper check into an electronic payment by scanning the check and capturing the bank name, address, account number, and routing number. After the paper check is scanned into an electronic payment, it will become null and void. So basically those are the things, um, that it covers. Uh, I want to briefly now transition and talk about what the potential liability is in the event that your debit card gets um, compromised at all. So um, once again here, I have to do a trick with my screen and showing you guys that information and we should have it now. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to talk about consumer protection for debit card transactions. Uh, consumers who have debit cards are protected by the Electronic Funds Transfer Act. That was that act I talked about earlier at the beginning of the video, which uh, came into law in 1978. So here's where the rubber meets the road. If a lost or stolen debit card 
is reported to the financial institution before any fraudulent purchases can be made, the consumer faces no liability. Now let's think about that statement for a second. The operative phrase is before fraudulent purchases can be, uh, before fraudulent purchases can be made. So obviously you're typically gonna find out about a fraudulent purchase after the fact, right? That happens nine out of 10 times. So it says if a lost or stolen debit card is reported within 48 hours, within two days, the consumer liability for any fraudulent transaction is limited to $50. So basically, if you read that first statement, the law is kind of saying, hey, the first $50 is on you if you happen to notify us within the first uh, 48 hours or within the first two days. Because the previous sentence that I read to you guys said what? Before any fraudulent charges. So that's kind of like saying, hey, we're only going to stick it to you for $50, which is really a bad thing. There is a silver lining in all of this. In most cases, your financial um, institution that issues you a debit card will have something called zero liability on your debit card, which basically means that as long as you're reporting it within the first 48 hours, you shouldn't incur any financial loss whatsoever. But let's continue. If a lost or stolen debit card is reported after 48 hours or within 60 days, so after two days and within two months, the consumer's liability is limited to $500. So it's quite simple that your card could get compromised on a Thursday, you go to work on a Friday, you don't check your bank account over the weekend, and all of a sudden it's Monday. So now you're beyond the 48 hours. Notice this thing says 48 hours. It doesn't say two business days or holidays are uh, exempt from this requirement. It says literally 48 hours. So this isn't a lot of time. A lot of times you're going to find out about these transactions, these fraudulent transactions after the 48 hours. So you're going to fall into this other category of between 48 hours and 60 days. And now they're saying that the consumer's liability is up to $500. So here's where the problem is. Even if you notify your bank after the 48 hours, um, it's going to take the average bank some time to investigate to find out whether or not those charges were fraudulent or not. Because of the health crisis, everyone has been keenly aware or been made aware that what? It's hard to get access to a bank representative. You can't get one in person at a brick and mortar without an appointment. And a lot of times the customer service or the automated systems that are set up within our financial institutions are outsourced overseas. So whether or not you're going to get a fast, prompt response to your particular um, account remains to be seen. A lot of times if there's a fraud alert, you can call a 1-800 number on the back of your card. That will typically shut the card down. OK, they will issue you a new card. But the important part of what I just said is, when are you going to get your money? So let me share a personal story that happened to me is one of the other reasons why I decided to do this video. So about two, three, I say about two years ago, my son was visiting me and he was playing on Xbox and he wanted to get this cool game. And he said, hey, dad, it's much quicker if I can just purchase this game online and I can download it immediately opposed to going to the store and having to come back and all that. I said, OK, fine. So I put my credit card information online, watched him complete the transaction. He deleted the transaction. About two days later, I started to see these charges on my um, debit card. Uh, they got up, they were from Microsoft because it was a Microsoft, it was an Xbox uh, console, game console. So these games were uh, associated with Microsoft. The charges came up, came up to almost $700. So I called my credit union. I'm not going to mention the name. I've been with them for over 10 years. I have a decent amount of money in the bank with them. And to make a long story short, it took over four months for me to get my money back. Now, I got every dime back, but it took, but it took four months. Why is this important? What if you're the type of person that you don't have an emergency fund or that two or $300 that get compromised through a fraudulent um, transaction uh, that compromised your debit card. And now the bank's saying, hey, we're going to investigate this. Now, if you look online, they'll tell you things like, oh, don't worry. <laughs> we're going to get this resolved within two weeks. It typically does not work out that way that quickly. So 
if that money needs, if you need to be reimbursed for that amount, and let's say that amount that that amount that you lost was for rent, that could really set you behind. Let's say the amount that was uh, taken out of your account was for a credit card payment. And as a result of that, you didn't have any backup systems in terms of a secondary way to come up with resources or financial resources, more importantly, to pay for that transaction. OK, what I mean by that transaction is let's say your minimum payment was one hundred and twenty dollars. You didn't have it. So you had to go 30 days late. That can be catastrophic to your credit score, which will be in another video way, way down the line. So just to give you an idea of how um, how much of an impact that can uh, have on your credit score. If you've got a pretty good credit score, like 750 or almost 800 and you have just one late payment, 30 day late payment that can drop your score, your credit score from anywhere from 70 to 100 points from where it was prior to that late payment being recorded. So it's one thing for the bank to say, hey, as long as you contact us within a reasonable amount of time, right, we're going to shut the card down. We're going to investigate. And then once we determine that it was fraudulent, we're going to reach out to you and make you whole. Well, what's the time frame that's associated with that investigation and reimbursement? And that time frame could put you in a very, in a, in a very, very financial bad place. So what is the solution? I don't have any ironclad solution, but here's some steps you can take. And we're going to get into this now. Um, steps you can take in order to, uh, let's just say, reduce the chances of you being the victim of um, a debit card fraudulent um, transaction. Okay. And here we go. We should be set up with it. Okay. So I highly recommend, I tell my clients all the time, you want to set up um, some alerts. So you typically have this set up with your credit cards. Every time there's a transaction on your credit card, you get an email or you get a text message. You should be able to do that with your debit card as well. And I strongly encourage you to do that because that helps you stay within that 48 hour window. You don't want to fall into that 48 hour, 60 day window because that's when the bank really starts to take their time in investigating and giving you a full reimbursement on a fraudulent transaction. So let's take a look at a couple examples of these, shall we? A large purchase alert. You can opt to receive messages for large debit transactions, uh, typically over $200. If you want to make that threshold lower, you can do so. Uh, low balance alert. Perhaps you would like to keep your account balance above a certain minimum threshold. In this case, if your account goes beyond the amount you set, you'll receive an alert. That's also a good thing. ATM transactions alert. Banking by way of an ATM is a common part of many people's banking experience. Some banks will alert you each time your debit card is used at an ATM or withdraw or deposit money. That's also important. Transfer alerts, kind of self-explanatory, but notifications to basically that something's been transferred out of your account. Deposit alerts when something goes into your account. That obviously is a good thing, but you don't want to have some money that's coming to you that really doesn't belong to you. And last and certainly not least, fraud alert. This type of bank account alert may be one of the most important you can receive, and it's typically one your bank provides automatically. If your bank suspects fraudulent activity with your bank issued credit card or debit card, you will be notified immediately. Keep in mind, this is different from a fraud alert, which you can set up on your credit report. So I just wanted to come out and touch base with you guys on something like this. I think this is a really, really important topic because so many people are under the pressure that they think that they're getting the same protection with a debit card as they do with a credit card. Now, for those of you who are concerned about, hey, I really don't like using credit cards. I understand that. Uh, there are some times that I actually prefer using a credit card over a debit card. I'll give you another example from a protection standpoint. Not only if it's just a new online merchant that I've never dealt with before, particularly use a credit card if you are financially disciplined and you know, you're going to pay it off at gas stations, at gas stations. There's something that's called skimming. And what this is, these thieves or these hackers will insert a kind of machine that will that'll automatically read your card and extract the information on it. And they do this at gas stations. 
So a lot of times you don't even know that, you know, you stick your card in that machine, you get your gas, you go on about your way. And then before you know it, a couple of days later, you got all these weird transactions going on. So if you're at a gas station, I typically say, hey, use a credit card. If you're doing online business for the first time and you're unfamiliar with that particular merchant and you haven't done business with them in the past, probably use a credit card and maybe then trans uh, transition over to a debit card. One thing that I do recommend is that if you do use a debit card and you do set up some of these alerts that we talked about in this video, please make a concerted effort to check your account online on a daily basis. Don't get in the habit of just checking your deposit and then looking one or two weeks later. Or some people only look 30 days later because most people don't have a budget. So as long as they know kind of a figure in their head that I should have a certain amount of money in the bank, most people don't have the habit of looking at their bank account on a daily basis, especially those accounts that are tied to your debit card. So that's going to do it for this video. Please stay tuned for the next. I hope you found this information informative and practical. The tagline for my show is topics you can trust. This was the Kevin Strong Show, and I hope to see you in the next video.